Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. School trustee Barry Newfeld dropping the R word in describing Chilliwack progress reporters. New Chilliwack MLAs Kelly Patton and Dan Coulter are sworn into their new jobs. Cultus Lake trees cut down for a controlled cull to secure parking safety. And after almost winning it all last year, the Fraser Valley Bandits re-signed their coach and general manager. Our special guests, plural, this week include Chilliwack City Councillor Harv Westering on Ch Councillor's Corner, Chilliwack City. As well on Now Hear This, Andy Rollman of Next Gen Hearing. As well, and we mentioned the school board, Chilliwack School Board uh, Chair, Willow Reeshelt. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. Chilliwack School Trustee Barry Newfeld in the public eye for using the R word to describe the editor and two reporters for Chilliwack Progress. Now, Newfeld has long been at odds with the newspaper over their coverage of local school board issues, let alone Newfeld's stance on SOGI 123, LGBTQ issues, and the denial of COVID. The Progress and the newspaper owner, Black Press, have been very careful in their wording of stories in response to all of this. BC Education Minister Rob Fleming has demanded that Newfeld resign. The BCTF, the Chil uh, Chilliwack Teachers Association, the Down Syndrome Foundation, and Special Olympics BC have all called for his removal or at least sanctioning. Premier re-elect John Horgan got down to post-election business this week, swearing in his caucus, including rookie MLA's Callie Padden of Chilliwack Kent and Chilliwack's Dan Coulter. Still no word if they're going to start off on the backbench or have further responsibilities in the new government. The throne speech is set for December the 7th, and a $1,000 COVID-related check is scheduled to be approved for those who qualify. COVID concerns at GW Graham Secondary and the nearby McDonald's. A parent informed Chill TV News that an early exposure case was detected at the school. The individual attended GW Graham November 16th, 17th, and 18th. Contact tracing protocol is now in effect. There was another individual who tested positive at the Sardis McDonald's on Vetter, which is literally down the street from the school. Published reports state that happened November 17th, and a deep clean of the restaurant was made on the 21st. The eatery has since reopened. The updated Sardis plan, along with city amendments for the OCP, the official community plan, will go public to a hearing on December the 1st. While residents admit Sardis is growing by leaps and bounds, the main concern remains green space. The OCP is traditionally a 20-year plan into the future for development. Finger pointing on social media was fast and furious when 38 trees along Main Beach at Cultus Lake were cut down. The Cultus Lake CAO Joe Lamb did not put out a media release but ended up responding to social media complaints. He noted that those trees were already severely damaged or dying. The removal was for safety reasons. The actual tree cull was decided back in May. Those trees will be replaced and improvements on parking lot B are already underway. COVID putting the clamps on Christmas plans as it is on the heels of the mask requirement out uh, orders for indoor spaces and closing the bubble on residences. Community groups are feeling the pinch and donations for nonprofits are hurting, of all people, Santa Claus. The Chilliwack Alano Club receiving a $500 donation from Rotarian and the owner of Locke's Pharmacy, Dave Locke. The annual Christmas party is going to be scaled back. The Alano still wants to raise money for goodie bags for the kids of the members. They are asking for any and all matching money donations. The Alano Club is a clean and sober public meeting space that is following COVID rules. But this Christmas, they won't be sitting on Santa's knee. No one will. Hopefully, they will get the kids will get goodie baskets. You can drop donations off at the club between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Monday to Saturday. New wrap toys are also accepted. The Alano Club is on Victoria between Young and Now. The annual Harrison Festival Artisan Market is usually in late summer along the beach in the lagoon, and some 50 artists sell their wares in the summer sun. Of course, that didn't happen this year because of COVID. However, the market is online this week. Perfect timing to buy local for Christmas. The information is on harrisonfestival.com. As we mentioned earlier, controversy again when it comes to the Chilliwack School Board. And on Chill TV's News of the Week, we spoke with School Board Chair Willow Reeshelt. <laughs> 
Chill TV news of the week, and uh, should I say besieged? Uh, the uh, Chilliwack School Board Chair, Willow Reshell, has joined us. Um, a ton of questions, and uh, I think everybody knows what we're going to talk about, and that is the controversy surrounding uh, Trustee Barry Newfeld, the R-word comments made uh, about uh, the Chilliwack Progress newspaper editor and two reporters, and some of the fallout. Uh, first off, Willow, uh, what has been done, if anything, have sanctions been laid out because of the specific R-word comments with uh, Councillor or with the Trustee Newfeld? So um, any kind of discipline on the school board has to go through a proper process and the comments were made after our agenda was already set and without time to involve any kind of proper due process for anyone. So um, if we are going to take action, it would happen at a future in-camera meeting, probably in December. Um, we did pass we we talked about it in camera and i did read a statement out at the board meeting last night telling everyone that the board is certainly not in support of those comments but there's been no other action taken at this point other than that about those specific comments uh chilliwack teachers uh, association uh, the bctf uh, the education minister rob fleming uh, amongst others including special olympics bc the down syndrome foundation they have all made their opinion very clear. Uh, are you able to address any of them? Um, I, from my understanding, they're all asking Trustee Newfeld to resign. I, I won't speak to that specifically. I will say that I do think that people need to think about why they're on a school board and possibly if they don't feel that they can adhere to the norms of language that would be expected by people who work in our schools, then perhaps they might want to reconsider their role as a school trustee. Uh, another trustee, uh, Daryl Ferguson, has quoted Wikipedia on the R word. Um, again, was there any talk about that action, which of course went public to social media? So once again, dealing with either the original use of the R word or the defense of it by another trustee would be dealt with in a future in-camera meeting. There wasn't time to give people proper notice that any action would be taken before our last meeting. Um, I, I have to say on a personal note, I was horrified when I saw the original um, use of the word. It's never ever okay. It hasn't been okay for decades to use the word as a pejorative. Um, and it's not even the, the term mostly used in medical terms now for anyone with a developmental disability. So, and to use it as an insult is just horrifying. I was gobsmacked actually that anybody in education would use that word. And then for another person to actually come out and try to defend it using d dictionary definitions when in those, both of those dictionaries, well, first of all, in Wikipedia, which is its own issue, but then also referenced Webster's and Collins when both of their definitions have the word offensive next to the definition. So um, most people understand that when you read a dictionary and it has the word offensive next to a definition, it means that that's a word that's no longer considered okay to use by people who care about other people's feelings. So, um, yeah, it, it, the original use of the R word was not acceptable, defending it, it's not acceptable, and it's certainly not what the kind of behavior that's promoted or tolerated in our schools. One of the uh, concerns on social media always has been, it's a bit of like the Wild West. Um, I can only imagine what your inbox has been like over the last couple of days. Um, have you had mainly positive uh, reinforcement of, of your stand, or have you taken some rather nasty shots from Joe Average Public? Um, it's been almost entirely filled with people complaining about the use of the R word and and then comments to me I've been making, obviously. I've been doing a lot of interviews and I've been getting mostly positive feedback for that. I, I have gotten three three emails from people who've told me that it's my behavior that's disgusting because I should be standing up for free speech and how dare I try to tell people what words to use. But I think most people understand that the the standards for speech, if you're involved in education, are a little different than if you're just a average person on the street. I mean, the use of the R word is offensive for anyone to use, let me be very clear, but it's especially egregious for someone who's involved in education and in educational leadership. Um, we actually have lots of kids with diverse abilities in our schools, and we certainly don't want to be using a word formerly associated with someone with a developmental disability as an insult, implying that somehow to be that person is bad or lesser or whatever. So um, it's just awful. <laughs> 
Uh, there has been, and I know this is an emotional topic, but uh, you and I both know uh, some kids who are, are in the autistic spectrum. They have to deal with this this word a lot. And again, that, uh, that's got to hit you, to use the, 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 the term, right in the feels. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I didn't think of it in terms of my own family when I heard the word. I just got outraged on behalf of other people. But I mean, my son is autistic, so... That's a developmental disability. I suppose someone could use the R word. Uh, people don't tend to, but they could for sure. So I am outraged on his behalf as well. But honestly, I don't feel like you need to even have a personal connection to be offended by that word. Um, we should all know in 2020 that you do not use the R word. You just don't do it. There's no excuse for it. On a far lighter note, uh, the your former boss, uh, the, the guy who used to have your job, Dan Coulter, the former school board chair, uh, he has now been sworn in as an MLA. Uh, that was on Tuesday. We taped the show on uh, on a Wednesday, so we are still waiting to see if Dan Coulter becomes uh, a minister. Um, any word or inkling that he may end up maybe not as education minister, but maybe a deputy minister under Rob Fleming. Uh, is, is there any possibility of that? I have no inside information on that whatsoever. I don't think Dan does either. Obviously, it would be exciting for Chilliwack to have a minister of any kind for, coming from Chilliwack. So I wish Kelly and Dan well. It would be, like I say, exciting to have someone in the inner inner circle uh, working for us in Victoria. But um, we'll have to wait and see till on Thursday. And talk about a roller coaster ride. Uh, and uh, again, a big thank you for, for the short notice and on coming in. No problem. Chilliwack School Board Chair Willow Reeshelt, and you're watching Chill TV's News of the Week. How's it going, everyone? My name is Josh Bohr, and I'm the Volunteer and Fundraising Coordinator here at the Salvation Army Care and Share Center. And I want to talk to you about the upcoming Christmas Kettle Campaign. Yes, it's coming back at the end of November here. And I think it gives us a unique opportunity to end 2020 on a little more of an uplifting, hopeful note. This pandemic, I get it, it's a cliche, but it has left us more disconnected from our community and each other than ever before. And I think the kettles offer us a chance to reconnect, again, with each other, but also with the broader community. So whether you are an individual or a family or a small business, hosting a kettle is a chance to get out there and, and see people you maybe not have seen for a long time, spread some Christmas joy, and have a heck of a lot of fun. You can sing badly, you can bring an instrument. It's just a great, great time. So if you're in interested, reach out to me. Volunteer at SalvationArmyChilliwack.ca. Let's spread some hope this Christmas season. Chill TV's Councillor Corner, Chilliwack City, with City Councillor Harv Westering. Um, Harv, welcome to the show. And we've got a, a lot of stuff, a lot of territory to cover. First off, the latest COVID-19 updates coming from City Hall. Uh, we've got the mask mandate. What else uh, do we have to deal with and should we be looking for? Yeah, thanks, Don. Um, well, uh, we all got to do our part to... Uh to bring the curve back down, obviously. And uh, a few weeks ago already, the City Hall implemented a new policy uh, for where everyone had to wear a mask. So that's nothing new for us. Uh, but uh, everyone else, we're encouraging to wear a mask, uh, stay within your bubble, uh, limit travel, um, sanitize your hands, and uh, basically stay six feet apart. So if we all do that, then we can bring this curve back down to a, to a spot where it's uh, manageable. So we're encouraging businesses in town to do the same thing. Review your COVID plan and uh, and uh, make sure everyone's safe. Community Connections, there is a, a new initiative, uh, a new app, if you will, uh, called EngageChilliwack.com. Tell us more about that. Yeah, well, through this pandemic, it's been difficult for people to get together. But uh, as council, we still really like to get feedback from the community. So we figured this would be a good way to uh, to share stories, uh, to tell us things that you like what council's doing, things that uh, need help, things that need tweaking. So. Um, if you're interested at all, you can visit uh, engagechillock.com and give us your, uh, your information. One hot button issue from the summer, and that was uh, uh, alcohol consumption at parks, uh, in particular uh, Vetter and Crossing. Uh, so we now have a pilot project review coming up. Um, yeah, we do. Um, so that was a new pilot project. We figured uh, that might be... Um, something that was worth trying, uh, having a picnic at the river and, and bringing a beer or a bottle of wine along and um, re drinking responsibly 
in that uh, one specific area. Um, obviously, we would like to get feedback from the community. So if you uh, have any feedback on that, that would be great if you go to engagechillac.com and give us that feedback. Uh, Rosedale Skate Park Survey. Now, being Rosedale, we probably should have Chris Clute in on that and this as well. <laughs> but uh, what is the latest on the skate park? Hey, I live in Rosedale too. Oh, so. okay, I didn't know that. I thought you were still in the way. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, a few years ago, we built, the, or not we, the city built a skate park uh, in Yero. It was very well received. And um, at that time, there was a young kid from Rosedale who wrote council and said, you know, that's a great idea that Yero's got one, but could we get one down here too? So this year, um, like with all things, when you're doing strategic planning, there was, uh, you're allocating money in different areas and there was a little bit of money left over. So Rosedale got a skate park and uh, we're also going to put lights there and we're looking for feedback from the community as to kind of what the design is going to be. So again, uh, if you can uh, go to engagechillock.com and give us your information there, that would be much appreciated. Rotary Christmas show. I've already had a, an earful from people saying, how come we can't have the parade? Uh, City of Chilliwack along with Chill TV and a few other sponsors uh, are in on this and it's going to have to be an event and not a parade. Yes, correct. Um, just, I guess it's a sign of the times. Hopefully next year we can get back to it. But for this year, it's going to be a virtual parade. Um, it's going to be uh, events on there, uh, comedy on there. Um, so it's definitely worth checking out. And I believe it's uh, being aired right here on Chill TV yeah. on the 5th of December. So yeah, it, uh, it's going to be worth checking out for sure. Harv Westering, City Councillor. And again, thank you for, for joining us on Councillor's Corner, Chilliwack City. And you're watching Chill TV's News of the Week. Special Olympics BC has weighed in on the Barry Newfeld, Daryl Ferguson controversy over the use of the R word. From their perspective, using the argument that it was to refer to adults and not children still does not wash with them. The organization denounced the word and the use in any context. BC Hockey League once again readjusting to the latest COVID rules. The remainder of the exhibition season has been cancelled. The regular season that was supposed to start December 2nd has been pushed back to December 8th to accommodate the new orders against team travel. This past season, the Fraser Valley Bandits went from worst to, well, second. The success will not go without a reward. The club has re-signed head coach and general manager Kyle Julius for its upcoming 2021 season. A decorated coach with a history of regular and postseason success with various domestic and international teams, Julius joined the Bandits in December of last year and then led the club to a second place regular season finish and a championship berth at this past summer's CEBL Summer Series Classic. Chill TV weather after another November soaking. Expect some sunny breaks and a weekend high of around eight. Well, a few sunny breaks. If you'd like to participate in reporting in news in Chilliwack and you have a story you think we should know about, send us a note to news at chilltv.ca. We'd love to hear from you. That's the news this week. I'm Don Lane.